Well, we never expected to lead the broadcast with an attack by Godzilla, but today the Weather Service announced a system is forming in the Pacific that one NASA climatologist called a Godzilla El Nino. And El Nino warms the ocean, and this one could be strong enough to bring once-in-a-generation storms to the west and change the weather coast to coast. We are, all of you know it, on the edge of a climatic abyss. In fact, we have 500 days to avoid a climate chaos. A NASA scientist says a quote, Godzilla El Nino could be coming to California. Godzilla El Nino. He says this year's El Nino weather pattern is even stronger than it was this time in 1997. And that was the strongest El Nino ever on record at the time. But winter is coming and it looks like it's going to be a wet one. This morning forecasters warn that storms of Godzilla proportions could hit the west coast. A NASA climatologist describes the system as a Godzilla El Nino. It could bring once in a generation storms to the west this winter. Meantime, forecasters are using the words Godzilla and mayhem to describe this year's El Nino. Extreme heat is fueling a dangerous situation out west, fueling a number of wildfires and forcing firefighters to battle them in triple-digit temperatures. It's the start of what could be a very difficult few months as a so-called Godzilla El Nino brews in the Pacific. This image from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is going viral. You might know them better as NOAA. It shows a current condition right now in the ocean that are similar to those that developed right before the Super El Nino of 1997. In this country, warnings tonight of a one-two punch from nature that could devastate parts of the West already in the midst of a historic drought emergency. Today, fire officials raised the threat level to the highest fire danger possible. And that move comes as forecasters warn of what's being called a Godzilla El Nino event this winter that could trigger some of the strongest storms we've seen in decades. This was the winter of 1997-98. San Francisco had its wettest winter in 120 years. Los Angeles got nearly a year's worth of rain in just one month. Snowfall in the mountains was double the average. 17 people died. El Nino was to blame back then, and an even stronger El Nino is developing right now. The LA Times newspaper reports that drastic weather also triggered more than half a billion dollars in damage, and that's in 1997 money. The forecasters say this year's El Nino is partly to blame for devastating flooding in Colorado and in Texas. Over the next three months, this should turn into what I call a Godzilla event. El Nino is characterized by a mass of unusually warm ocean water stretching across the Pacific to South America. Last month, the mass of warm water on the right appeared broader than it did in 1997. If it continues to build, this will have a tremendous impact not only over North America, but over the entire planet. You see this red color here? Yep. That's indicative of warmer water temperatures building up across the Eastern Pacific off the shores of South America. When you get that, uh -huh. then you start to get implications of global weather patterns. And this is a look at what we're seeing right now. That shows already a strong El Nino. And when we're comparing them to that 1997 that was the strongest, yeah. this was the strongest that it got. And that was in November of 1997. Wow. Now go over here and look at where we are now. It's and it's a August. strengthening El Nino. It's getting stronger. And there's one last thing. You see that warm temperature, warm water up there across the coast of the U.S. Yeah. and up towards Alaska. That is another signal that we watch. And when those two signals go together, it can have even bigger impact. Last weekend's wild weather could be an indication of what's to come this fall. The same conditions that forecasters saw before the 1997 Super El Nino are taking shape along the equator now. But we got more than our share of El Nino that year. Ivory Small from the National Weather Service says a similar storm is setting up. And as you can see, along the equator, it's pretty similar. Uh, looking at the color, the red means very warm temperatures uh, along the equator. El Nino is characterized by warmer than average water temperatures, and the sea surface temps right now are three to six degrees above average. 
will get a lot of energy in this branch of the jet stream that's headed towards Southern California. And Warm temperatures serve as fuel for the jet stream, strengthening it and pushing storms directly into California. Another factor scientists are seeing this summer, weakening trade winds. And when those winds slack off, that means that the warm water is, at the surface is not being pushed as efficiently to the east. So it hangs out south of the United States. The tuna crab that surfaced along San Diego shores could be another sign. These sorts of things do clue us in that we might be in for a pretty good El Nino season. This is what they call level five. The highest fire danger rating in the nation triggered today. The drastic move signals tinderbox conditions on the verge of exploding. This year of extremes feeding on each other. Fire fueled by a crippling drought, exacerbated by a heat wave. And now the forecast calls for a monster El Nino this winter. Storms capable of triggering floods, mudslides and mayhem. We have four year record drought. We had late spring rains, and now we're seeing conditions that firefighters have never seen. For now, the biggest threat on the fire lines. This year already proving historic. Nearly 40,000 fires torching 6.4 million acres. Firefighters from every state mobilized and moving west. Today, the Forest Service launching two C-130s to drop retardant. While the 747 Super Tanker, the largest firefighting aircraft in the nation, moved into position in Colorado Springs. When fire season is finally over here, a new threat will begin. These drought-stricken hills will be ripe for mudslides if El Nino predictions hold true. Scientists say warming ocean waters are surging towards the U.S. With it, the potential for once-in-a-lifetime storms. This El Nino could be among the most powerful ever. This is the Godzilla El Nino, if it matures and actually comes to fruition. Great droughts always end in great floods. A year of extremes after an explosive start. The signal that we see in the Pacific from space is actually larger than it was in August of 1997. And so this potentially could be the El Nino of our generation. A strong El Nino could turn drought-stricken California from this to this. In San Francisco, the winter of 1997-98 was the wettest in 120 years. A full year's worth of rain fell in Los Angeles in just one month. Mountain towns were buried under twice the average snowfall. What's coming this winter could be even stronger. El Nino comes in all sizes, small, medium, and large. But very rarely do we get a Godzilla El Nino. Godzilla is apparently the only word to describe what climatologist William Patzert sees in images that show unusually warm water spreading across the Pacific near the equator. That warm water mass, the signature of El Nino, seems to be growing even broader than it did in 1997. This one looked promising from the start. At birth, it was a big baby. In the United States, a strong El Nino can bring more precipitation across the south and up the east coast. Northern states are likely to have a winter that is drier and warmer than usual.